Welcome to Lex's World, everybody. Hope you're all having a good day. So these are quite challenging times for growers out there. We have supply chain woes. We have fertilizer prices rising, or in some cases, you can't get the fertilizer you want. And of course, the price per pound on your yield is dropping precipitously every single year, despite all of the rising inflation, or at least that's true for viewers of my channel. So under these circumstances, I find that growers tend to flock more and more to uh, soil amendments and fertilizers that A, are more locally sourced, at least continentally sourced, uh, that tend to still be organic, because people tend to like organic amendments, and as well, they want cheap, easy amendments that you can add to an inexpensive soil and make that inexpensive soil a whole lot more healthy and robust for your plants, because, you know, that's the inexpensive way of doing things. So I figured that this was a good opportunity to introduce you guys to kelp as a growing medium amendment. Now, kelp is actually a seaweed. Here is some kelp growing happily, specifically a type of seaweed that's technically not a plant, but a gigantic algae. No matter how much an underwater kelp forest looks like a bunch of plants, it's considered a renewable fertilizer since kelp grows very, very quickly. And all you have to do is come around, cut off the top portion without killing the whole thing, and it'll just regrow that top portion. If you cut off the top of the thing by hand instead of using a machine, as is done with this kelp-tastic product by TNB Naturals, then the kelp that you're selling is also considered fully, fully organic, which is a nice thing. Then it gets dried and converted into its final form. Now, kelp can come in a variety of forms. There is a powder of it. There is a ground-up kelp meal, which is what this is right here. And there's even, you know, liquid extracts and foliar sprays and things like that. Which form of it you use is actually dependent entirely on your growing medium. You have to pick an appropriate form for your medium. And I'm just going to open this up for you guys here and show you what it looks like. And you can see it's really just ground-up, leaf-looking foliage kind of matter. And uh, if you lean in and smell it, it smells amazing. It smells just like the ocean. Now, kelp meal can also be made from a variety of species. I've seen various talk online about how one species may be better during flowering and another's better during veg, or you should go for one species versus another. I found all this talk to be relatively inconclusive and unconvincing. As far as I can tell, any kelp that is sourced from the ocean, at least, should have the same or similar mix of micronutrients and growth hormones. So in my view, the species doesn't even matter. However, the cold water species known as Ascophyllum nidosum is by far the most common one that kelp is made out of. That's what this one is made out of. And if you see that, you can rest assured that it's a completely fine one. Now, when the kelp comes in this form, in this ground up meal format, then it is ideal for adding into soil growing. And this is also the most common form of it. Now that actually works out well since kelp works best as an organic soil amendment and organic growers tend to grow as a group in soil anyway, at least almost all of them. What nutrients exactly does this amendment contain? Well, it does have your uh, macronutrients in modest amounts. Specifically, it's got a bit of nitrogen and it's got a bit of potassium, but macro is not what this soil amendment is about. Kelp contains roughly 60, or by some counts up to 70, micronutrients and growth hormones that are useful. Uh, so as far as the minerals that it contains, You've got calcium, magnesium, sulfur, manganese, copper, iron, zinc. Uh, kelp is getting all of these things from the sea, by the way. So this is pretty much all of the micronutrients that you're ever going to need. The natural growth hormones that it contains includes various auxins as well as cytokine, which is useful. Now, in terms of the practical benefits that all of these things give to your plants, 
The big difference you might notice when you're adding kelp is that you're going to get more flexibility in your stems and more bendability, and your plants will respond really, really easily to any kind of scrogging or low-stress training, both things popular with viewers of this channel. And because you've got an extremely large mix of micronutrients in there, obviously this is going to feed your soil and in turn feed your roots and result in bigger, healthier root masses, as you might expect. Meanwhile, the very modest amount of macronutrients that are contained in one of these packages is really convenient because it means that you cannot accidentally over-toxify a macro just because you're adding this. You can add almost as much kelp as you want and almost ignore the bag, uh, which is kind of neat for all of you more beginner growers as well as the more experienced of you out there that just don't measure soil amendments that carefully anymore. Now there's no right way or wrong way of adding this uh, into your soil as long as you're following certain dosage parameters, at least roughly. Uh, some people will make a tea out of kelp, they'll pour water through it and then add the water to their soil. Some people will add it as a top dressing. The best way is to actually mix it all the way in. If you're mixing it in into your soil, then you need about one kilogram of this stuff for every 10 square meters of soil that you've got. And it's really, really simple. You just put it in there. It releases slowly over time. You only need to add it about once per year and it'll do its thing just kind of as you're watering. And the nice thing is most bags of kelp will give you various instructions on uh, what to do. So like this TNB Naturals bag has instructions for top dressing and the compost tea and even adding it to lawns because you technically could. Though I don't want to add something that nice to a lawn if you ask me. Don't go too nuts guys. Do follow the adding instructions that are on the bag because there are a couple of micronutrients out there where if you add a bit too much of them it's not a very good thing and you will get some light toxification. But otherwise, there you go guys, kelp as a soil amendment, uh, the easy micronutrient filled, organic, relatively local amendment you're probably not using. Or maybe you are, I don't know. Uh, either way, thanks to TNB Naturals for providing that as a visual for me. Uh, they released this product relatively recently and it's about 16 bucks a bag. I'll link to them down in the video description. Uh, Kelptastic. Uh, but otherwise, if you found this useful, make sure you're subscribed, that you've hit that like button, and we'll see you all back here next time.